All right, and welcome into our 2021-2022 NBA season previews. We're going to be talking about the Houston Rockets today. With me, as always, I guess, when anytime I do NBA stuff, is Jared Prosser, uh, myself, Trey Dalbert. We're going to go over the Houston Rockets and uh, preview the season. So, to recap things, I don't think I have to say much other than the Houston Rockets were really, really bad last year. Oh, they were. Um there were all sorts of mitigating factors, of course, and we'll get to those. Uh, but the Rockets finished 17 and 55. It's the equivalent of a 20 win season in a normal regular season. Quite clearly, with 17 wins, they missed the playoffs by a, by a long, long way. Uh, offensive rating, 27th in the league. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, 27th in the league in offense and defense. Um, and funnily enough, net, net rating, 27th. They pretty much sucked. Having said that, having said that, this team, this team had a lot of shit go wrong last season. They managed to get through the whole, uh, yeah, they, they lost Daryl Morey at the start of the season. They managed to get through that whole James Harden fiasco. And they managed to even rehabilitate John Wall, which, to be honest, is probably a bigger win. Uh, the front office, Rafa Stone's new front office, they've pivoted brilliantly to recoup so many of those draft picks that they lost in firstly trading for Chris Paul, then trading away Chris Paul. So the fact that they've been able to restock the cupboard in essentially one or two trades has been a really, really big win for them. Uh, there are a lot of positive developments in Kevin, uh, yeah, in Kevin Porter Jr., in Jay Sean Tate, who came out of the NBL and cemented himself as a starting three. Christian Wood showed that when healthy, he's on a positive, a positive value contract. The record sucked, but there were some really, really bright positives for Houston. A big part of why the record sucked is because they didn't get a ton for James Harden, <laughs> right? But it all at the same time, it also helped them win 17 games so they could get a better pick. So, yeah, they 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 had to choose a path. It was either yeah. get players or get picks. When you're trading to Brooklyn, you were getting picks. You weren't getting players for him. So they chose their path and they've stuck to it. I think they've. I think they turned. Yeah, they, they took lemons and they made lemonade. <laughs> I'll never do that again, I promise. <laughs> All right, moving on to off-season stuff. Yep, yep. Uh, their big sort of signing <laughs> is Daniel Tice, but I think the bigger sort of takeaway is huge draft for the Houston Rockets. Yeah. Jalen Green yeah. comes in. Uh, your guy Shangoon comes in. They make a bunch of picks. So uh yeah, Josh Christopher, you, yeah. Usman Garuba. Yeah, they, they they picked up some very, very talented players in the draft. Nobody uh, had more Chang- first round picks than the Rockets. So no, what would you give their getting, off season? Oh mate, get, getting Shangun at 16 is a steal. That's almost an A by itself. He is going to be a wonderful NBA player. Celtics um, draft pick 16, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but when you look at when you look at their ins, and their ins are, you know, great in 2026. They won't be great this season. But we're going to look back at this draft in retrospect and go, this was an A-plus draft. Having a look at their outs, they really didn't lose anyone of, of any sort of consequence. Any well, they didn't have there. anyone of any sort of <laughs> Not consequence. <a> different, <laughs> but they will lose John Wall eventually. They'll probably trade away Eric Gordon for whatever they can get for Are him. Are sure those are bad things? Well, look, they're both quality NBA players when healthy, which is a huge asterisk. But again, that... They're 30 and 32, I think, respectively. They don't fit with what the Rockets are doing. The Rockets are a young side. They don't need those guys soaking up minutes. They need to let the young guys play through their mistakes. So they will lose a couple of players. It'll be interesting to see what they can get back for them, probably more draft capital. Um, but overall, an excellent offseason for you. Moving on to the key player. I guess it has to be, for me, Jalen Green, right? You want to see no, the... No, no, Why no, not? No. He's a rookie, and he's a super raw rookie. He's just going to play through mistakes. Key player for three or four seasons away, absolutely. But for this season, their main man will be Christian Wood. He he had a okay. great season okay. last year. Like twenty, was he twenty one points, tick under ten boards, a little over a block a game. He hit a couple of threes at thirty seven point four percent, I think it was. Uh, he he had a really good campaign. He was injured towards the end, but I don't know whether that's injured or he's got a stubbed toe. We're going to keep him out for three months injury. 
Um, given Houston's draft situation, it could have been either. Um, I don't think he, he's a centrepiece for a contending team, but all of these guys have picked up, if one or two of them can pop, even in you know their draft picks in the next few years, if some of them can pop and Christian Wood becomes your third best player, that's a really, really good side. So this really is really good contract player. for Christian Wood too. Wonderful contract. Uh, we spoke you know, last off season and we said it was very much a, a challenge contract. It was one of those ones where it, it, it was never going to be an even, even money contract. Either Wood was going to outplay it or the Rockets were going to overplay because Wood had had just a, a really nice six weeks in Detroit. As it turns out, it looks like it was a really good value deal. Um, I think Wood is a, like he's an ideal stretch five next to Shangun as well. He's not going to take you down low and, and bully you, throw his hips into you, but he can hit the three and he can protect the rib. The two things that Shangun can't really do. He will be the main man this season, but ideally for the Rockets come 2025, 26, he's your third, maybe even fourth best starter. Do you even consider trading him? Potentially. It depends on what they get and who develops and who doesn't. Whether Wood plateaus or elevates again or declines after this season. There's so many variables, but yeah, everything's on the table at the moment for Houston. I guess my perspective was on Jalen Green. I guess you hope he's your franchise guy, right? Key player. Maybe you don't even necessarily know after this year, but you hope that he's the face of the franchise. I honestly think he'll he'll end up being the best player in his draft ahead of Cunningham. I, I think he's a, an absolute home run pick. I get the Cunningham pick, and to be honest, he's probably a slightly safer pick. Um, but I really I'm massive on Jalen Green. I think he's an outstanding prospect. What player are you looking forward to the most this season for the Houston Rockets? It's it's their X factor, their swing player, and that's Kevin Porter Jr. Very very talented player, but I mean, the reason he got picked at, I think, pick 30 by the Cavs a few years back, despite being a clear top 10 talent, is the space in here. Nobody quite knows what's going on. They there. gave up four second round picks to go get him. Oh, look, <laughs> he's, um, he's, he's, he's insanely talented, but he is, um, let's call him wayward. I think it's probably the safest way to put it. He's a wayward player. Um, that game he had against the Bucks, and yeah, it was a late season game. The Bucks weren't really into it, but 50 points, 10 boards, nine threes, I think he hit. I mean, that's just a taste of what he can do. The big thing for me is he seems to be slated as the starting point guard, and he's very much a natural too. That's not going to work with Jalen Green on board. So I think the idea was that they were grooming him to be a one. At times, he, look, he, he there are times when he, when he looks outstanding, when he looks almost like Gilbert Arenas. But there are also times when he plays the point like Zach Levine used to in Minnesota, which is definitely not a compliment. If he can elevate himself up a little and get some consistency in his playmaking, he could be an ideal scoring point guard. Able to play off the ball if you let Green take over. I, I think he I think he could be the point guard of the future. Um, but there is a long way to go. And a lot of it does depend on Green's development as well to take a bit of that playmaking off him. But he's the he's the intriguing piece for me. I think the X factor for me has got to be Garuba. I don't quite know what I'm getting there. His body type looks like a Draymond Green. He played on a Spanish national team. It doesn't look like his athletic ceiling is super, super high. Will he ever be able to be like a knockdown shooter? I don't really know what his upside is. I don't think he's like, I think the Draymond comparisons have to stop. He doesn't have that sort of basketball IQ. His body looks um, like it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I, I mean, he's, he's super fast up and down the floor. He's a bit undersized, very quick leaper. Um, not necessarily a, a big leaper, but he's very fast off the ground. A good second jump. I, he reminds me a little bit of Kenneth Fareed. I was a big um, Kenneth Fareed guy. Yeah. Look, Kenneth Fareed was great, but, Kenneth Reed also doesn't have a place in this league. You know, that's Fair. my worry with Garuba it, it, because Fareed couldn't shoot from beyond his arm and, you know, couldn't protect the well, – didn't play any defense, really. Garuba will play better defense than Fareed from day one. But, um, yeah, it, it, he's, he's definitely a, a prospect with a lot of rough edges, but th- there's, there's something there. There is something there I like with Garuba. I think this can be said, uh, Houston Rockets probably won't win a ton of games, 
this year. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> do, you, do you have maybe a crazy prediction outside of, hey, the Houston Rockets won't win a ton of games this year? Oh, look, no crazy predictions. But to be honest, it's not about the wins with the Rockets. It's We're looking for, for those little things. We're looking for the flashes of genius from, from Green. We're looking for how Wood and Shangoon how they how they mesh together the chemistry they can get as a inside out four and five looking to see how um how kevin porter jr develops we're looking to see we're looking to see the building blocks for something with this team we're not looking to you know for a record but as it is since we since we do need to get a prediction down vegas has the rockets at 27 wins and i think they will finish well beneath that they had uh they were equivalent of 20 wins last year i think they will drop back to 19 and the biggest reason for that is that John Wall isn't playing. You know, they had a they had a legitimate, very good starting point, not all NBA standard anymore, but they had a very good starting point guard for most of last season. They won't have him there now. It's going to be all on the young guys, and the losses are going to pile up. They're much more raw, but they, even though the base talent is better than last season, um, Tice, we mentioned Tice before in passing. He's an underrated pickup for these guys. He's a he's a really good rotation piece, but him him on his own is not going to win you NBA games. No, he's, he's a complimentary player and he does that really well. But he's no star. He's no featured player. So for me, nineteen wins this season, track. I don't have much else to add. I think they're going to be a bad basketball team. <laughs> yeah. So Houston, enjoy your number one pick next season. You you will definitely have earned it, um, but. Be be ready for what I think will be a very bright future in Rockets. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd say, hey, maybe maybe call up Daryl, but I don't think he'll pick up the phone for the Houston Rockets. <laughs> well, it, Simmons would be an interesting fit on this team. He we'll would. To, we do with <laughs> you, but I, I don't think they're in the market for him. Yeah, I don't think Daryl wants John Wall either. So no, 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 he definitely doesn't. All right, that's our Houston Rockets preview. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow Jared on Twitter. I, I think it's hey underscore hey underscore it's underscore JP. Yeah, myself, Trey Daubert. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.